Agony is yet another indie horror game. This seems to often be the genre of choice when the budget is limited, simply due to the fact that it allows for a darker setting, a setting where less is more. The human body is not equipped with adequate tools which allow us to operate in darkness. This causes us to feel fear because most other things usually can see in the dark while we stumble blindly and clumsily. The beauty of this approach to creating a game is that the world that you make can use the darkness not only to terrify the player but also to cover up many of the rough edges of your levels. Horror games will often force the player to face overwhelming odds, giving him a much weaker state and often encouraging him to flee or hide rather than engage enemies. This shifts our position from that of a predator to that of mere prey, a position which generally goes against our human nature. Creating a potentially thrilling experience and when combined with solid gameplay and a good story, this can be a very difficult but rewarding journey, oftentimes worth taking again. The last such game that I've played was The Forest and while it had many weaknesses, it still managed to be entertaining, scary and overall an enjoyable journey. And then we have Agony. Agony's presentation seemed so original and exciting to me. A damned soul wandering hell. The visuals in the trailer appealed to me so I decided to give it a chance. The game starts with you simply falling into hell. The first level looks a lot like what I would imagine hell to actually be if there was one. It's dark or architecture appears to be of organic nature. There's a feeling of hopelessness in the air. The initial impression is quite positive. You reach the first room and are greeted by the first puzzle of sorts. You have to find a heart and place it on a scale and then you gotta find another one because it doesn't take just one. The game wants you to explore the map. I assume this is also where we will find more information about our lost soul and his journey. We reach a prison of sorts and one of the prisoners recognizes the protagonist and calls him Amraphel. He blames him for all that has befallen everyone here and then promptly dies. It's only been a few minutes into the game and several things have become quite clear. First, the character models in this game are so bad that one could assume it's been in development since 2003. The voice acting in this conversation is almost as bad as the model of the character speaking. So you. I should have killed you when I had the first chance. My whole family died. My family. My family. I no longer remember. But you. You. I won't forget. You're gonna fry here. <laughs> Get to you, son of the whore. What the fuck? No! No! I curse you, Amberbell! Ah! Beat down! Our character does not appear to remember anything from his past life. His only thought is to reach the Red Goddess who appears to guide him towards her. You will find other lost souls standing around, most of which appear to have lost their minds. We are soon told that there are also demons in hell who will hurt us and kill us if we're not careful. If this happens, our soul will leave the damaged body and can look for yet another vessel which to possess. If we fail to find one, we can resurrect on a nearby mirror, which serves as a checkpoint. So as you can see, the mechanics aren't too complicated. The game encourages exploration with hidden rooms and maze-like maps. You can find these weird golden statues, which your character seems to absorb, but nothing else appears to be happening. I was not sure what they were for, but I kept collecting them anyway. I found out much later that these count as currency, with which you can purchase various things from the game's gallery. You can get game art, character models, and a convoluted comic book, which is supposed to explain the events before the story, but it's written so poorly that you'd have a better chance at understanding the ramblings of a crazy person. But I digress, so let's get back to the game. Something that it does very well is the atmosphere. If you have ever played played Silent Hill you will probably remember that the Japanese idea of deep horror involves a combination of sex and death. This appears to be the mix here as well but I was very confused about the execution of the first idea. First of all male lost souls have penises. All females have only boobs, no vaginas. I was really confused about this choice, especially because you get to see a ton of other vaginas. You level up your skills by squashing apples with vaginas on them. You have vaginas as decoration on the floor. You have opponents whose face is essentially a vagina with teeth. So why don't the female lost souls have vaginas? I know it seems like a strange thing to complain about, but I'm a person who is quite disturbed when a game has such strange inconsistencies in its art design. Oh, and you did hear that right. Your character does have skills with which can be improved. This doesn't really make the
the game into an RPG in any way, the skills barely have any effect on him. He can have his stamina increased so that he can run for longer times, he can increase his health and so he can take a slap more before he dies, and he can decrease the noise he's making while moving. The problem with this is that the vagina apples are rarely in obvious places. Many of them require you to actively search for them. This would not be such a bad thing if the exploration aspect of the game was more fun, but it really isn't. Your character is quite slow and weak. The environments are often structured like a maze. Even the developers knew that there's a huge potential to get lost, so they gave you a skill which is meant to show you the way once you get lost. The game did try to change things up with each level and that is probably the only reason why I managed to finish it to begin with. If it hadn't been for the environments, I would have cut my losses and run. But Hell is designed quite well on its own, considering the limited resources here. The gameplay also changes slightly with each level. At one point you have the ability to take over demons and as you progress further through the game, your character gains control of even stronger and stronger demons. These few moments are actually quite fun simply because it is reversing the roles. Now you are a badass for once, rather than a weakling who's hiding all the time. Halfway through the game I started wondering when the story will finally unravel. The red goddess keeps redirecting us to different places and it seems like the game is getting nowhere. You do find notes written by someone but they make pretty much no sense as well. Clearly the red goddess has something planned for you and you are in some way special but none of that is really explained. I was also confused by the fact that the first NPC called me Amraphel but the goddess kept calling me Nimrod. I assumed she was insulting me but I was wrong. More on that later. The game itself will offer you no story of any kind during your first playthrough. That's right, you're meant to play the game several times. Seven times to be precise. Once you beat the game once, you unlock the succubus mode. This mode enables you to play as the aforementioned demon. It changes the level slightly since the succubus can climb places and it changes the gameplay due to the fact that she is strong to begin with. Dying will be a very rare occurrence here and you can essentially destroy almost every enemy in the game. She also moves much faster, so completing this game mode is very easy and quick compared to the original one. I only wanted to try it, but ended up completing it anyway. It was a bit more fun, but that doesn't really say much considering that the first playthrough was pure agony gameplay wise. See what I did there? In any case, once you've completed this game mode, you have to replay the game five more times as Amraphel again in order to get the other endings. The final one of which is the true ending. I was curious about it, but not curious enough to actually replay the game anymore. So I went to YouTube and checked out the other endings. All of them are confusing and don't really seem to tell a story at all. It all feels extremely random. It's like the developers had a story in mind, but then either didn't have time to incorporate it into the game or simply super drunk during the whole development process. In any case, there is no story here and that really sucks because there is also barely any gameplay to begin with. The puzzles are boring and don't really require any thought. It's just go around, find an item and come back and place it here or go around, scan a symbol or a painting and then paint the symbol over here. Everything else is just walk from A to B and try not to get killed by some of the other demons. It's boring and monotonous. A game should have a story and a story would really have helped here. Let me remind you of the game Soma. The game's gameplay was pretty bad too, but the story was engaging and motivated the player to push on. It had great voice acting as well, something that this game clearly lacks. Agony overall pretends like there is a story and dangles it in front of the player like a carrot on a stick, hoping that he will reach the end of the game and forget what he was looking for by then. The comics, the notes, the paintings, the multiple endings, everything looks like pieces of the story that are all there and you just need to piece it together, but there really isn't any story here. This felt wrong to me. You know how in Dark Souls you kind of have a story but it's not really told in a meaningful way, but rather spread out in item descriptions and other such nonsense, it's left for the player to find and mostly fill in the gaps. Some people apparently enjoy this. They spend years filling in the gaps and stitching together what is supposed to be a complex lore. I find that lazy and a good example of very bad storytelling. Agony is lazier than that. You see I actually sat down and researched the name of the character. Remember when I told you that one guy calls him Amraphel but the red goddess calls him Nimrod? Well, both are his name. The story of Nimrod is a biblical story. If you read it and then look at the final ending of the game, you will be able to make a few very vague conclusions. I won't name mine here because I don't want to spoil the game for the very few of you who actually want to attempt to figure out the story on their own. I'm also not sharing this because I'm one, well, I'm not really 100% sure that my assumptions are correct. It is also vague that it's very possible 
possible for me to have drawn conclusions which are absolutely wrong. If someone does want to discuss it with me, feel free to leave a comment and I will reply with my own conclusion there. And this should also double as a comment section spoiler warning. So, you know, if you're reading the comment section and well, be aware that it could be that we talk about the story there. So be aware that Agony was not what I had expected. It had great atmosphere, but nothing beyond that. The gameplay is atrociously boring. There are occasional bugs as well. At one point, I tried to reach the next part of a level by climbing the body of a dead demon who had been chasing me before. I was actually up there at first, but I went down to check if I had forgotten anything and assumed I could just climb back on the corpse because... It is positioned exactly in a way for it to be like a ladder. Well, you know, if you just jump on it. What happened was that I was propelled into the sky and fell under the map, forcing me to reload the game. I had a few other drops under the map as well, but none of them were too bad because the game's checkpoints are generally very close to each other. So you're never going to lose too much of your progress. And as mentioned before, there is no story here. Even if you are a Bible scholar and can see a story, I'm not one of them. And I believe that the vast majority of players will not be such either. A developer has to make sure every player, no matter their background, can understand and experience the story. Here, this was clearly not done. <laughs> not done at all. There are very few people who will be able to enjoy this game. So if you've seen the footage and you've heard what I had to say so far, and you still think that it's worth a shot, more power to you, go ahead and give it a try. But for the rest of you guys, I think it'd be safe for you to stay away from this game and not waste your money on it. I'm all about supporting new developers, but there are no redeeming qualities here overall. My advice is to only use this game as a bad joke on a friend, find someone you don't like that much and give them a, this game perhaps as a gift, then keep asking if they have reached the part where the story really kicks in and the game suddenly becomes super interesting and of course your friend will never reach that part because there is no such part. This is how you could make a joke out of it. At least that way you will get some entertainment from this game but at the expense of your friend who you don't seem to like that much anyway so I guess that's okay. This is where I want to thank you for watching my video. I hope it was at least somewhat entertaining. I like to believe that I've played this game twice so that you don't have to play it at all. In any case, I'd be very happy if you took a look at my other videos. And again, thank you for watching and have a great day.